Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Simon85 here with you today on talking about the T54 in Armored Warfare. Now, a few people have approached me and asked me if I can start doing tutorials on tanks, maps, and mechanics for this game. So, this is going to be the first one of many, I would hope. Now, the first one I'm going to look at is a tier 2. It's low tier, it's a beginner tank. Um, however, I've noticed a few people struggling and they've asked how I managed to beast mode so much in this sink where they take it out, they get instantly killed. Um, and a lot of the problem is down to lack of knowledge. So let's go over this tank and have a look at what the issues are and what can be done to improve your gameplay with the T-54. Now first up, let's have a look at the armour. A lot of people struggle with armor knowledge. Now, this little diagram here shows you the white bits are the turret armor and the blue bits are the hull armor. Now, let's start with the back. 60mm of armor on the back of the turret and the back of the tank. Basically, you don't want anything getting behind you um, as that is the weakest part of your tank. The side armor on the turret, 130mm, it's not too bad and it's quite rounded so your turret is relatively safe um, your side armor here is only 80 mil on the side although the tracks do take up a lot of it so most of the time your tracks will eat that damage although gang shot up here and here you're gonna take the damage most likely your frontal armor this is where it's at with the T-54 now what you really want to be doing is only exposing this section of your tank maximum. If you can, only your turret is beneficial. 205 millimeters of armor, and it's quite rounded. People are going to struggle at tier two, even tier three, to damage that particular section. Up here, isn't too bad. It's sloped quite nicely here. These are rounded off, and it is 120 mil of armor in this section down here is what you do not want to be exposing um, basically it's less sloped it's a flat surface and it's quite weak people shoot you there it's going to do some damage now the other thing to bear in mind is that this tank is quite slow so getting into position can be a bit of a ball ache but what you want to be doing is showing only the front of your armor where you can to the majority of the enemy team the rest of the tank is actually quite useful too. The gun itself is quite nice. The alpha damage with the top tier gun and the AP shells, 251 average damage, 186 millimeters of penetration. Now if we take a look at the ammo, what this means is your penetration is quite high. Compared to your armor, if you're shooting at another T-54, which is the most, the most armoured tier 2 vehicle, you're going to penetrate a lot of the time. You have 186mm of penetration, 251 damage. Happy days. The next ammo type, Heat, is less useful for MBTs and generally better against scout vehicles, light tanks and tank destroyers. It has less penetration but it does more damage. Always bear that in mind. Switching ammo is another key point. The last ammo type is high explosives. As you can see here, 14 millimeters of penetration is nothing. Only 183 damage. Now for those of you that don't know, HE shells are most used for causing module or crew damage. This means that you're not dealing a lot of alpha damage to the tank itself, but are damaging things like tracks, engines, site modules, crew members. That can be just as beneficial as actual damage. If you track a tank out in the field in the middle of your team, you're going to benefit, your team is going to benefit, and that guy is going to be severely miffed. The upgrades for the T-54, as it's a tier 2 vehicle, there aren't many options. However, the stock gun that you start with is fairly decent, but when you unlock the top gun, you gain. Basically, 
9 millimeters of extra penetration and a 29 extra alpha damage which is not great but at tier 2 when you have as much armor as this beast does is quite nice also the top ammo gives you more additional penetration and damage as do the HE rounds and the heat rounds but as mentioned before they are situational and the HE rounds are not intended for main alpha damage the engine upgrade isn't as beneficial as one might hope but it does speed this tank up quite nicely although it's still not fast ever the other upgrades include an automatic fire extinguisher some sights which increase the vision range and your accuracy apart from that you don't get many particular upgrades coming back to the garage for a second what i will show you in the gameplay section of this video is how to effectively use this frontal armor i was on about earlier exposing your side and back is never a good idea with any tank what you want to do is try and get hull down which means hiding the majority of your hull and only exposing your turret while this can be difficult to do it is possible but at most expose only this section of your vehicle hide that away at all costs you'll see what i mean when we take a look at the video so this is part way through one of the matches in a t54 um we had sort of got halfway through and as you can see here this is what i was on about broadsiding earlier as you can see i've just shot, shot that guy in the side of the tracks and did critical damage to his tracks so i need to fire a bit higher to hit his side armor um and that connects and does some damage but this is exactly what i was on about they both have their sides completely exposed um shot came in bounced clean off my armor there he's down this guy still got his side armor to us another shot straight through his side um, and there's there's nothing they can do um, they should really be turning towards us um, and this is what I mean about experience and and knowing um, what you're doing I mean fair enough he's trying to run off now this guy he's got his front llama to us um, <coughs> however his front llama isn't brilliant um, I'll cover that in another video um, because there's also an issue that I've noticed with people assuming that all MBTs are heavy tanks um, which isn't the case so I'm just gonna go in there now I sat back quite a way there um, because there was a lot of their tanks clumped in one area um, and at a distance it's less likely they're gonna penetrate me if they were to fire at me um, the distance the shell travels um, it decreases penetration in a roundabout kind of way so that's just something to be mindful of is also distance Right, so there's a few of them there, as you can see. I'm not particularly worried about it. I mean, our team are dropping like flies at this point, and I'm going fairly deep into a lot of enemy guys. But here we go. This guy's uh, trying to take me on. He's got a sight to me. Shoot him straight in the side. And you send that shot bounce off me there from the right. Look at my angled armor. Just bounces straight off shoot that guy in his lower plate I'll take a shot in the side from the right again but that's fine still got plenty of hit points this guy there we go that was elevated shot him straight through the front of his armor next target please terrain plays a big part in these games that people don't actually realize use the terrain to your advantage keep your hull um, hidden you know use the rocks use the terrain only expose your turret it's, the turret is generally the strongest part of most tanks um, especially MBTs this guy look side armor again every time they're exposing this so now he's got his back and his side to me it's like well I will just shoot you there leave the target a bit that one actually bounced off because of the angle his tank was at <coughs> So, right here we are. I mean, there's, there's only a few of our guys left now. There's only a few of them left as well, but it's looking like the match could go either way. However, I was fairly confident at this point, as I'm in a T-54. Um, they've got a couple of T-54s as well as a Dragoon. At this point, I realised, well, 
The T-54s seem quite inexperienced. The Dragoon doesn't need to be as experienced to damage my tank. Um, he is a tank destroyer with a lot more penetration and better gun than these T-54s. And he's faster. And can spot me from further away. Um, I mean, I'm backing off, keeping the front of my armor towards the main threats. Here we go, there's the Dragoon. As the shot came in, bounced off because I'm keeping the front of my armor angled towards the T-54s. That guy takes a shot, misses. Now I'm broadsiding. <coughs> exactly what I've been moaning about. Shoots me in my tracks. Stops me dead. That's fine. That's not a problem. I'm not taking the time to aim at his lower plate. Take the shot straight through. He fires, bounces off my armor. Now I'm keeping. Notice how I'm keeping the front of my armor angled towards both of these guys. Taking the time to aim, lower plate, straight through. Um, this is the problem when a lot of people rush their shots. Um, you're not going to connect unless you get lucky. Now I mean, this is pretty much a short fire. Where an arrow, the guy was capping. He takes down their dragoon at last second. There we have it. Um, that is effective use of armor and exploiting the weaknesses in others, really. It's uh, not as difficult as it would seem once you stop and think about it. So, as you can see from that, provided you pay attention to what you're doing and what others are doing, you stand more of a chance of survival. Now, the T-54, like I mentioned, has brilliant frontal armor. If you can keep that towards enemy tanks, especially at uh, the same tier as you, tier 2, maybe even tier 3s, you stand a pretty damn good chance of contributing a massive amount towards winning the game. Let's take a look at the after battle reports. So here we have a victory screen and the badges that you got, how much damage, spotting um, and the spotting damage. Now we also have the next screen which shows where you came in the team obviously I got top spot which to be fair was kind of expected now we did have some tier 3's in that game uh, which is worrying uh, really that they didn't perform as well as perhaps they should have the Leopard 1 and T62 yeah they had their own they did what they were supposed to be doing so many of the guys down here I don't know whether they were just unlucky or what but they didn't do half as much as they perhaps should have. Now, if you look at this, you've got the performance screen, and it shows you a breakdown of which vehicles you damaged, which ones you destroyed. There's going to be more detailed things coming later on. But what I actually wanted to look at, because we've been on about the armor and stuff, is this last detail screen. It gives you a pretty comprehensive breakdown of exactly what occurred in the round. Now as you can see I fired 18 shots, 16 landed on target. So that's a pretty good ratio. Two enemies killed, six damaged. Which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's enough. Um, potential damage caused, 543. The total amount caused, nearly 3,000. Now you've got 13 penetrating hits out of the 16 that landed. So that shows that time was taken to aim the shots and make sure that you were hitting somewhere you were going to punch through, do some damage don't just blind fire, don't snapshot, take your time it's worth it because the reload time will will perhaps be your undoing um, a lot of the damage was done um, between 150 and 300 meters <coughs> a lot of it while stationary in the main battle tanks such as the T-54 you going to struggle to fire accurately on the move so staying stationary provided you position yourself properly isn't a massive problem um, a lot of the damage I did was to other MBTs in fact all of it was to MBTs um, I didn't really bother or get the chance to fire at light tanks tank destroyers or fighting vehicles which is fine that's fine um, but here as well damage caused to higher tier vehicles um, quite a bit of it a thousand of it was done to tier 3 vehicles which again it's 
doesn't always mean that just because you're in a lower tier vehicle you can't do anything that is lies now what does interest me and I really wanted to show off to you guys was the lower section of this uh, the protection Potential damage mitigated, 1,747. Now, what that means is um, that your armor was doing its job. You were positioned correctly. Potential damage from non-penetrating hits, 1,398. And potential damage from ricochets, like I said, I think that was the one that came in from the right. Because I was at such a steep angle, it hit my armor and the shot just ricocheted off. 349 is a lot, but this top figure here, non-penetrating hits because t people aren't taking the time to aim. That is a massive issue. I mean, that damage mitigation ratio, 7.5, is quite high. That's what you should be able to achieve in a T-54. If you take your time to think about it, it's not a particularly fast tank. Don't rush in if you don't have to. Sit back consider your options think about what you're doing and keep your frontal armor towards the majority of the enemy if things get behind you you might struggle if it's a tier one scout tank not so much they're gonna have if it's an m113 it's gonna have to switch to incendiary he ammo and the most it's gonna do is a few module damage it's not gonna do a whole lot of actual damage yes it's annoying yes it's distracting but worry about the main threats if you start turning to engage that tank and expose your side or your rear armor to bigger tanks mbts other t-54s leopards whatever they're gonna do a whole lot of damage and that is not what you want to be doing with this tank so i'm hoping that this video will help to show you guys your options what the tank is capable of yes it's a low tier tank Yes, it is a beginner tank, but the point I'm trying to get across is stop for a second. Consider what you're doing. Do you need to move? How should you move? Like you've seen in that video there, there was two T-54s and there was a Dragoon further away, but he was going after another guy. Even though I was trying to chase him down to prevent that, I was trying my best to keep my front armor towards the two, two T-54s. If they get a shot in me from the back or the side, it's going to sting. And that's not what I want. To win the game, you need to preserve your hit points. Preserve your tank. Don't waste it. That firepower you've got is quite nice. So just take your time is all I ask. So I hope this video has been a help to you guys. If it has, great. If not, leave some comments. Let me know why. If it has been a help. Give me some comments. Let me know what's going on. Let me know if you want to see any more. What questions have you guys got? If I can help in any way, I'm more than happy to do so. There'll be more videos coming soon. Keep your eyes peeled. Bye-bye.